What's going on, people? Had a very, very interesting conversation. Very interesting conversation today. I will submit to you, and I will prove my premise. I'm going to submit my premise to you, and I'm also going to prove it to you. You do not need money to make money. Let me say it once again. You do not need money to make money. You don't have an income problem or a capital problem. You have an ideal problem. If you have the right ideal concepts, whatever, you can get the money. That's the problem. If you find what you want to do challenging to get the money, it's your ideal. Because and it's, it's, it's your ideal on two fronts. If you are not motivated to do whatever you need to do to raise the money on your means, which means sell your house, which means sell your car and get a hoop deal, which means, hey, get a roommate or two or three to ease your monthly burden so you can use that money for the business. Let me say it again, because I don't think that you are with me. It's not a capital problem. It's not a money problem. It's an ideal problem. If you are not motivated enough to do whatever you need to do to get these things going, your ideal is the problem. It's not good enough. It's not motivating enough. Or it's just flawed. There's something that's wrong with it. Because many, many people here have an ideal of how I should live my life. But I am a high-minded futurist. I believe in the future. I believe in technology. I think things are going to be better because I embrace change. I t came out of a business which was a hard asset business which revolved trucks, diesel, warehouses. There was a lot of cost with that business. And I moved into a business model where the cost up front is time. This is why I'm telling you, I live on this concept. The vehicle that I'm in was bought by this concept that it's an ideal problem. If you are part of the G-verse and you get, or you're on my email list, you know you get a shitload of stuff. I'm always testing ideals. I am always testing concepts because I know it just takes one good one to make a week, to make a month, or in the case of my first book, two and a half freaking years. I lived on one book for two and a half freaking years. And I know, I know what you're going to say. Well, Glendon, everyone can't write a book. And I'm going to say, bullshit. When I wrote my first book, I couldn't write a book. There's nothing I did before. I did not take a course. I sat down. I did it. Later on, I put more money into it because I made massive mistakes. Made massive mistakes. But once again, the concept, the ideal was good enough to get past all of my mistakes. Once again, you don't need money to make money. I want you to say this because I see so many people who are waiting to get to that position to get the money so they can do the damn thing. Stop fucking waiting. Time is the most precious resource that you have. Stop fucking waiting. If you need a hundred grand, scale down your idea where you can do it with 5,000, get to 5,000 and get fucking started. That's what you do. You don't wait until you get the five grand. You don't get pissed at family members who won't give you the money. Because once again, it's their money. And two, your ideal isn't good enough. If it's not good enough for you to sell out, why should anyone else invest in it? You Do you know that when you take out an SBA loan, they make you collateralize Boo Boo the Cat? 
It's like, hey, we're giving you this money. Do you believe in what you're doing to the point that you're going to collateralize Boo Boo the Cat? You should. Because if you don't, they shouldn't give you the money. Because you're not committed to your ideal. You're not committed to your console. One of the biggest notions, especially in, say, 2000 up to now, that you need all this money to start a business. No, you don't. If you, and I'm going to give you an example. Say you go ahead and you collateralize Boo Boo the Cat. Boo Boo is like, yeah, what the fuck? And you say, Boo Boo, we gonna keep you. We just need you because you're highly valuable. And we need you as collateral to get their asset, which is capital. So we now have capital to do more. There'll be plenty of catnip for your ass later, but right now we gotta do this. You go ahead and you get the money. Because this is the thing. If you want to start a business, you cannot live the life that you're living and start the business if you are loaded down with obligation. Notice I didn't say debt. There are people who don't have debt, but because of their obligation, mortgage, rent, car notes, student loans, um, you can't do nothing. And as long as you think that you're going, you know, because this is what everyone wants to do. They want to make the current situation better before they move to the next situation. And the current situation that you're living in was based on what? How you think. And if your level of thinking has not changed, your circumstances and your situation will not change. None of that shit's gonna change. It's not. Because if it was, you would experience the change. Whenever I am doing stuff and it's not working out, First thing I do is I step up on the podium and go, okay, I fucked up somewhere. Sorry, you know, yeah, I fucked up. Something went wrong. Not that the world doesn't like me. Or people's favorite excuse, well, the Lord didn't want me to have it at this time. Let me tell you something. I'm going to step up on this because the God that I believe in wants you to have it all. But see, there's a price, and it's called W-O-R-K. <laughs> if you're willing to work, you can have it. It's there for you. It's there. But I've seen so many people, and you know, this is just me. I think a lot of people who are religious are religious for spiritual edification. I get that. And I think a lot of people are religious because it provides a scapegoat for mediocrity. It's like, well, you know, if you're with the right people and you say, you know, Lord didn't want me to have that. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, you're going to get a lot of commiseration with that because they believe in the same thing. Uh, I will tell you, universal law does not care if you're good, spiritual, or not. It doesn't give a damn. It does not care. And if you think it does, you are uh, been frustrated for a long time. But potentially, to get everything that you want, things that you need, the things that make you make your world go round, you can have. Stop thinking you have to get all this money. Go to Kickstarter. If you are thinking you need money to get your shit going, go to Kickstarter and just research projects and re research that someone had enough balls or nipples, pinched their nipples and stepped up to Kickstarter and said, look world, this is what we're doing and we want your money. Would you uh, please pledge thank you and you know this is something that's i think everyone should have at least one to two years of direct sales experience where you actually have to sit down in front of a stranger and say excuse me i'm here and this project that you want done is going to cost you 150,000 i need a 75,000 dollar deposit check to get things rolling you have people who are afraid to ask for a fucking dollar. Imagine the sweat-inducing state when you're sitting there asking this little person who has smiled, who just said formally, hello, and you're asking for that kind of money because it is the fourth meeting, you don't know where they are, and you're just like, you know what? I need to close these motherfuckers. I need to close these motherfuckers because when I developed what I call going down in flames, because there's there's two ways you can go down. There's two ways you can fail. 
You can fail like a coward with your tails between your legs running away. <laughs> or you can fail like, you know, a dragon. And you just explode in flames because the bigger your failure, the bigger your lesson. If you start practicing failing big, you will start winning big. And this is in every aspect of your life. One of my friends saw me with a chick and he couldn't believe that a dude like me could get a chick like that. Because I failed. Walked up, hey, you want to go out? No, damn. Hey, you want to go out? Kept asking. And then they start saying, fuck yeah. You learn from massive failure. Talk to any pussy hound who's really good and I guarantee you he will say I've asked 100 women out this month. And your pathetic ass didn't even ask 12 women out last year. Of course he's gonna be more successful because he's putting in more effort. Once again, this is applicable to anything. Anything. If you want, you know, like my writing, it's become better because I've made a commitment to do it every day. I've uh, invested in it. And you know, straight up, I still think I'm in elementary school as for writing. I'm still like in my elementary stage. For me, my personal goal, my journey, my walk in this writing thing. I am like still like, you know, we get naps at recess and we go to the playground and there's the big merry-go-round and the seesaw. That's where I'm at. And I'm excited because there's more to come. You motherfuckers can't get where you want to go because you are looking for the magic kingdom before you even broke the ground on your victory garden. You haven't done shit, but you want the world. You won't even come up with a fucking ideal and fail because, ooh, people will talk about me. Ooh, the negative people in the family. Ooh, I may look as silly. Ooh, I might be embarrassed. I might hurt my little feelings. And to you, you will live the life of a coward. You're going to be that person that's 75, 85, 95. With the future, you might be 155, sitting up in your chair, ringing your bell, wondering what the fuck happened, and going back and looking at all of those opportunities that you turned into a scared little bitch and didn't step up to the plate and say, hey, I'm going to put my shot in. You can't hit the goal if you never swing or throw the ball or take the shot. And so many people will not even do it with an idea. You don't need, I'm telling you, I'm here. I'm telling you that you can start a company that can support you and your family for a little to no money. But you will pay in terms of sweat equity, time, experience, mistakes, failure, and falling on your face, falling on your ass. This is how you will pay. So, no, I'm just saying, you can keep sucking corporate cock, going to work to a job that you don't want to, wiping your chin off every day as you go home because you done gurgled so much cum that, you and, you, and the thing is, you didn't even like the cock. You didn't even like the pussy you were licking. It was just like, eh, I gotta do it because you, you, were, you were dealing with position leadership. You didn't like these motherfuckers. You didn't want to be around these motherfuckers, but you happened to be there because they had a position that you had to play ball or play with balls to keep your damn job. I'm telling you, that is a horrible way to live. I understand you can't jump out today, but if you, once again, let yourself go of, I gotta have all this money to start a business. You can start, I'll give you an example of someone I helped. Started a soap business in their apartment. Got laid off and I was like, <clears throat> had unemployment and looking for a job. I said, if you took that time <laughs> that you're looking for a job that's eight, 10 hours a day, filling out resumes and going to all this bullshit. If you took that same time and put it into your soap, you would be able to sustain yourself. But, you know, I got to get this. I, you know, I got to get this. I was like, okay. And things started to get dicey. Unemployment was about to run out. Shit was looking lugubrious, dark, gloomy. Somebody started making soap like a crack fiend. It was up all night making soap. 
and was selling the shit for a buck, two dollars, but was selling like, you know, like what, a pack of six for like 10. Then one day, I, I called this person and I noticed that the person was calm on the other end of the phone versus all of this fear and anxiety that existed before. They were calm. I was like, why are you so calm? I just sold $2,000 worth of soap wholesale. I already had it in the closet. You know, I actually listened to you. I, you know, certain things that were hard to make, I just stockpiled before I sold them. Then someone called me with a $2,000 order. Uh, my net profit on this soap is $1,800 and thirty dollars on some soap soap anyone can make soap anyone can make a meal how many restaurants do you know in your town that have been open for years everyone has a kitchen in their house the grocery stores around the corner you don't need to go out and eat people want to go out and eat and they're making money. And they're making money. So if you ever said it takes money to make money, right now, wherever you are, get up, go into the bathroom, look yourself in the mirror, and take your hand, this one, and put it back as far as you can and slap the stink out your ass. Hopefully, the shock and pain will bring you to reality. And start saying, I can start a business with what I have. I can, I can, I can start a business. I, I can start making some money. No, it won't be enough to support us. But you know what? I'm going to give up television. I'm going I'm to give up, uh, you know, this uh, membership to this bullshit club. I'm, I'm not going to go out. I'm going to give up drinking. I'm going to give up smoking. And I'm going to take that money and I'm going to invest it in my business. You know, when you start thinking like that, it's amazing what happens. You go from a zero to a hero. People start doing shit for you. Folks who are in your family that thought you were shit, like, you're looking kind of respectable, sonny. Well, look at Gina. I don't know. There's just something different about her. That's what happens when you become productive. That's what happens when you stop believing in social narratives and do your own damn work and construct your own life. You find out that these things are very possible because they're out there. All right. Hopefully you are thoroughly disgusted with yourself. If not, insult it by me and that you will be taking your little janky ass into the bathroom for that ultimate bitch slap and starting to get your life to fuck together. Because if you want a business, you can start one. You can be that guy. You can be that girl. All right, this is Glendon, and I will see you on the good side.